Hello and welcome back to the channel. So this video is another lathe restoration and improvements video. I am getting very close to having this lathe up and running and I'm very eager to make something on it. But there are a few things that need to be done still. So if you watched the last video you would have seen that I had an issue with the shaft on the motor snapping and that's rendered the motor non-usable unfortunately. But I have found another motor which I'll need to go and pick up and hopefully it will either bolt straight on or I might need to drill and tap a couple of holes. So that's all good news, I can use all the mounting plates and stuff that I already have for the current motor here. In this video I want to work on the spindle here. So I actually have to make up a new spindle, a um, couple of reasons. One is the thread on the end here is kind of stripped out. So it needs to be built back up, uh, turned down and the threads cut back in here. Um, but the main reason is because the spindle or the original spindle here is not long enough for all of the sheaves and, and stuff that I have in the box here. So I decided just to make a brand new spindle and I can make it to the specifications that I want providing it fits inside the housing and works with the bearings or possibly I might need to buy new bearings but we'll get into that a little bit later on. I'm going to take some of these covers off and the probably the back cover and all this front part here off and there's some bolts that hold um, another flange on the inside here. Uh, I'll take all that off and then I'll be right back. Now before I get too far into pulling all this stuff apart I want to take some measurements and draw up a bit of a plan on dimensions and distances and stuff like that for this spindle. So for example over here we've got the grub screw which is showing a, a witness mark on the spindle extension I guess you call it. Um, so that is for the sh pulley sheave and there's another one around here for the indexing wheel. So what I want to do on the new spindle is to uh, put a bit of a flat on here in this area and that will allow me to tighten those grub screws down onto something flat. The other thing I want to know is the overall length of the spindle. So I want it to come out just a little bit uh, from the end of the back of the lathe here and that is so I can mount a hand wheel on the on the back here as well. And at the front we want the chuck as close to the bearing here as possible so I think this old thing here is a little bit too far out so it can probably go in about five six millimeters somewhere quarter inch something like that and that will be probably a little bit better to reduce vibration and chatters and stuff like that. I've taken some measurements and pulled all of the spindle out of the machine as well. I did start to draw up the plan. Um, I was going to have a thread at the end and a shoulder here for the chuck to register up to but I don't think that plan is going to work with what we have here. So how it originally went uh, you have a tapered bearing, the outer shell goes on there, there's a whole bunch of shims here that push on that outer shell and then that cap gets bolted on. So basically if the bearing gets a little bit loose uh, you need to make up another shim, looks like someone's made one up here out of brass or something. And that keeps everything in here nice and tight. Um, and then you have this piece here that screws on the end after you've put that cap on um, and that just screws onto the thread and up to the inner race of the bearing here and just seats onto there. And what that's for is uh, when you screw the chuck on the end it registers up into the end here. So I think I'm going to have to make something very similar to that. Um, I'm not going to be able to use a shoulder like what I had in the plan here and this front bearing is going to have to be changed a bit because I'm making a M30 thread here you know this is a one inch thread so M30 is a little bit bigger and the bearing will need to be replaced so it needs to be a bigger inside diameter 
but we still need to maintain the outside diameter and in this case uh, this is two inches so it's a two inch outside diameter and a one inch inside diameter so I'm gonna have to have a hunt around to see if I can find a bearing with two inch outside diameter and whatever the equivalent is to say 32 millimeters inside diameter um, and you know basically of the same width here as well well I'm back from research and as you can see that plan A ain't gonna work so I've taken these bearings off here off the shaft and um, done a bit of a measure up here and I found out that this lathe is an American lathe so these are imperial bearings now the idea was to use a bigger thread on here an M30 and um, put a bigger bearing well the same size outside to fit into the housing but a bigger inside but the size I need they don't manufacture I presume that the distance between the ID and the OD is probably too narrow so we have to go to plan B and the reason why I wanted to put an M30 thread on here is because I can actually cut that in the lathe otherwise I would have just remade this spindle with the same thread and dimensions except a little bit longer and just gone with that and I think that is exactly what I have to do here so the plan now is to buy some more bearings I think we should be okay getting these in New Zealand if not I'll have to source them from overseas and go with the one inch 8 TPI thread which is on here now I can't do that in the lathe but I have ordered a die and a tap so the die will be used to cut the thread on the outside here and the tap will be used to cut threads in face plates and other bits and pieces that I make for the lathe that screw onto the thread here So it's finally arrived. This is the uh, tap and die, one inch by eight TPI. It sort of makes me laugh a bit. When you order these things, you know, you can pay more for faster shipping. And since I had a whole bunch of other projects to do, I just went with the standard shipping as I wasn't too worried about trying to get it really fast. But anyway, you place the order and nothing happens for about three weeks and then they ship it and then it turns up about five days later which is not too bad for the other side of the world here in New Zealand so pretty much if you paid for faster shipping what it means is they just post it sooner anyway I've got the tools here now so I'll give you an update on what we've done on the lathe I didn't film this bit but what I've done is I've installed another motor here on the lathe this motor here is a three quarter horsepower so I think it's going to be plenty big enough well for this size lathe anyway but I've made it a bit more simple here I've made a bracket up and the bracket just bolts on the back and also just has a bolt in the front here but you can see the existing bracket down the bottom there um, that was the hinge bracket and because of the way these belts and pulleys work the tension on the belt is maintained by the spring on the lower pulley uh, which is the spring here so I didn't actually need to make up that hinge part on that bracket down the bottom there so this bracket that I've created here just bolts on there's really no adjustment there because we don't actually need adjustment I've aligned it up and it's pretty much going to be fixed in position okay let's get back to the spindle build basically I just need to make a spindle like this although um, a lot longer but the dimensions for this front part is pretty much the same now the bearings I got are actually metric bearings so these bearings are about one millimeter wider than the original bearings here so I have to factor that in for the centerpiece so this will have to be about two millimeters shorter in this section so that the outside race of the bearings here are at the same width as the original part 
when I was considering making this with the M30 thread on the end, uh, I was going to use this 40 millimeter round bar, but um, I found this 32 millimeter bar, and that is about half a millimeter wider than this part here. So basically, once I've cleaned it up, I'll be down to this size here. So I'm going to use that for this build. First thing we do here is chop off our piece of bar to the right length. I make this a little bit longer than what I need, just in case. Then I turn down a little bit just to clean up the surface of the entire bar. I use the old spindle as a guide here. I actually make that front piece a little bit longer, just in case I need a little extra length out of the front there. And then that's turned down to 25 millimeters, or around about one inch. Then I start working on the back part of the bar. This part here is where the bearing is going to go. So this is fractionally larger diameter than the rest of the bar, so that the bearing has a nice tight fit. Then the rest of the bar is turned down to 25 millimeters as well, and that is so the pulley sheaves can slide onto the bar. Just take off the sharp edges there. Now I set the spindle up in the lathe steady as I want to start working on this front part. And the first thing I do here is drill out the center. And I'm using this really long drill here and I'm hoping that it's going straight. <laughs> And this drill bit here is just a fraction smaller than 12 millimeters. This was kind of a tedious job here because I didn't have enough length on the lathe and I basically had to pull the whole tailstock off and clean off the chips every two turns of the tailstock handle there. So this part took a long time to drill out. Once it was drilled out, I'm ready to cut the moss to taper. And as you can see here, the taper is bouncing up and down a bit here, so the hole in the middle is not completely in the center. So I go in there with a boring bar and I've set the compound slide to the correct degrees for MT2 taper. And I just take it out with that and then I come back later on off camera and use the reamer again. The final step is just to make sure that I have contact all the way around the MT2 taper there. Now I have the spindle set up in my lathe so I had to go to a friend's workshop and make this die holder for the 1 inch 8 TPI die that I got. Then I set it up to start cutting the threads. Now this was really, really hard. It's a very coarse thread. You know, I had the spanner down the other end resting on the back of the lathe. And I've got a big, thick 16mm bar here that I'm using to cut this thread. And after some time I get there. This is the support for the chuck and the chuck will go on and register on the back of that. And as you can see here, the chuck is a little bit wobbly. Well, that thread in there was quite hard to cut manually, but I did get there in the end. So there's a little area in here, and that's where that uh, bearing goes. Well, the inner race for the bearing will go in there. This little collar that you saw me put on here, that's the original one from the other spindle. And that tightens up on that inner race there, on the bearing. And then of course it has a flush side, I've probably got the camera in the wrong position, but let me just move that. So it tightens up onto that bearing uh, inner ring, or inner race, 
and then it should have a flush and true face on this outside part here and that's where the chuck nut registers onto that front face and I did run it a little while ago and it was a little bit wobbly up and down so I think what I'll do is I'll make up a new part for this and I'll make it a little bit bigger on this area so that it matches the nut here and what I'll do is I'll put the bearing on and then I'll tighten the new piece onto the thread so it's up against the bearing and then I'll machine the front of it so that it's all running true and then when I put the chuck on this part of the chuck the big nut here will tighten up flush onto that new piece that I make now for some of you engineers that are wanting to get into woodworking just a little bit of information about the chuck here. So this is a Nova chuck and you know like machinist lathes chucks for wood lathes are not cheap when you want something that's you know got quality. Anyway this is one of the latest Nova chucks and there's no uh, jaws bolted on the front here at the moment but it works pretty much the same as a three jaw chuck so it's a self-centering four jaw chuck this one. And that's typically because most of the time you start off with a square piece of wood that you can put into the uh, chuck here and tighten it up onto the flats. Or sometimes you might even have a round piece of wood that you can put in and that works just as well. But this chuck here, as I mentioned, it's one of the latest ones. Um, to tighten it up, you turn it to the right just like a machinist slave and to loosen it off, uh, turn it anti-clockwise. But the earlier chucks from Nova, this was actually the opposite way round. So to loosen off the chuck, you would turn it to the right. And to tighten up the chuck, you turn it to the left. So you can imagine down at the Wood Turners Club, with my brain working based on a machinist lathe, I get this a little bit uh, confused. So the point I'm making is I specifically bought this chuck that matches the same rotation as my machinist lathes. Anyway, just something to keep an eye out for if you are a machinist and you are looking to get into wood turning. I've turned the part round on the lathe and the first job here is to drill out the centre to match up with where I drilled them from the other side. I have a little bit more room here now because I've got this part further in the chuck of the lathe so I'm able to get through there a lot quicker. Then I turn off the part that was held in the lathe initially. And that's turned down to 25 millimeters. And I test one of the sheaves and that fits on nicely. We're still at the back of the spindle here. So this is a thread that I'm cutting because I want to put a hand wheel on the back. And you'll notice that this is a left hand thread and that's so the hand wheel won't unwind when I'm using the lathe. I don't have anything to test the thread out with so I'm just sort of going by eye here and I'll just have to make the hand wheel to fit. Now I'm installing the bearing onto the shaft. This is the front bearing. I need to make a new flange nut to replace the original one. So that's cleaned up in the lathe and then I take some measurements based on the original nut. I drill out the center and bore that out to size so that I can tap it for 1 inch by 8 TPI. I test the original shaft on there and that works fine. Then I part off. Now I assemble that onto the spindle and put the chuck on there as well. <laughs> 
That is how the chuck mounts onto the spindle there. And that all works fine, but I do have one issue, and I don't know if you saw it in the video there, but let me show you. I don't know if you could see that on the doll there, but that is about 0.4 of a millimeter run out. The machine surfaces here are fine, so the chuck is square to the spindle. There's no problem with that, it's not sort of on a lean like that or that. Uh, but the issue I'm having is more of an eccentric issue, so the chuck is doing this type of thing. Now this insert here that goes into the chuck, it does have a kind of a, a recess cut into it and I presume that that recess will register on something here when it's put on to probably a different lathe. But I think with the original spindle uh, and the way it's all set up here, um, it's going to be a little bit harder to make a recess. I can probably put a recess or an extra piece on this flange that I made here um, so it comes out, but I'm going to have to bore uh, this nut out a little bit more here so that there's some meat for it to sit on. Now in machining around 0.4 of a millimetre which is around about 15 thou or something like that is absolutely unacceptable. However for a wood lathe it may not be so bad. I mean items that you turn on a lathe can distort a millimetre or even a lot more than a millimetre. So is it much of an issue? Maybe not on a wood lathe, but I just don't like it. So I think I'm going to make this part again. I'm going to add a little bit in the, on the front of it here. So it sticks out and it registers inside here. And that should make it nice and true when that chuck is screwed back onto the spindle. You've already seen how this was made, so I'm just going to do it off camera and then I'll be back. I've done that flange nut off camera and now I've got the chuck dialed in in the four jaw. I've used Loctite to secure the insert into the chuck and now I'm going to turn out the inside to match the flange nut. I assemble the chuck and test that in the lathe and I'm less than half a tenth of a millimetre. The spindle needs some flats milled on it for the poly sheaves and the indexing wheel. And it also has a flange nut type thing at the back as well. Now it's not threaded but it needs to be secured by that flat that I'm milling there. Now the spindle's all completed and I've assembled it up into the machine and the next job here is to fix the bearing plate onto the plate directly behind it. That's pretty easy, I just drill some holes and I'm using M8 bolts with nylock nuts on them. Again I test out the run out once it's in the lathe and we're still two to three thou so I'm pretty happy with that. It's probably better than some of the laves at the Woodturners Club to be honest. Now I start working on the motor shaft. I'm basing the measurements off the original shaft. So I've already turned down this part to 25mm for the pulley sheaves and this is about 32mm in diameter. I need to drill and bore a 19mm hole in the front here that hole is for where it fits onto the motor shaft. Now I flip the part round in the lathe and I clean up the other end. I need to drill and tap a M12 thread in this end because this is how the spring and that assembly is held onto the shaft. Over to the mill and I drill and tap a M6 hole for a grub screw and that goes on the end that connects to the motor shaft. Also I need to mill a flat on here for the poly sheave 
so it can be locked into place with a grub screw. Okay, so that shaft is pretty much finished. I've attached it to the motor and it spins nice and true there, so that all turned out pretty well. Pretty pleased with that. The pulley sheaves, they just fit on there um, quite nicely, so get them on. Uh, there, you did see me mill out a little piece at the back here, that's for this pulley sheave to be fixed to with the grub screw. And that is because this pulley sheave is fixed to the shaft, whereas the other one is the one that moves in and out like that. There's a couple of things I need to do here to finish this off and that involves adding some support for the shaft. If you've seen my other videos you would have seen that the shaft on the motor where the, this shaft goes on to, it actually broke the motor shaft and that was because there's a lot of tension on the belt here um, trying to pull this up and the stress on it eventually gave way on that motor shaft. So to safeguard against that I'm going to put a couple of bearings in here. The first one will go on way up here and it will be uh, in a housing and will bolt onto this main back piece here. And of course the pulleys will be in the middle and then there will be flex on the end here as well. So I'm going to put another bearing at the end here but it's not going to be on the shaft here. It's going to be on the plate for the spring. So the spring kind of goes on like that. And then this bit here gets screwed on to the end of the shaft. And I'm going to put the bearing on the end of uh, here like that. So I'm going to remake this piece with a step on it. And the bearing can be pressed on there. And of course that bearing then would be mounted to a plate uh, that goes on to maybe these bits here or across here. I'm not really sure yet. I'll have to work that part out. But anyway, that will give it a lot of support and I don't think we'll have any issues with shafts breaking in the future. Now, one of my other videos, I actually showed how I made the bearing housing and bracket. It's the same as what I did for the spindle at the top. So I'm just going to do all these off camera and then I'll come back once it's all done and once it's all mounted together. And then we're pretty much ready to give it a test run.